my name is Soleil and welcome back to the Little Reader's Corner. It is July so we've just passed the half point of 2019 and I just wanted to go through some of my recent favorites of this year. So these are all books that I've rated five stars. In the stack I have nine books and then two kind of honorable mentions that have happened through 2019. So we should just get right into it. This is in no particular order, just my favorite. So first off, we have Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I bought this in October. I did not start reading it until my winter break in December and it took me until March to finish because this is about a thousand pages <laughs> and it's really dense and it's the finale in the series. So this took a while. I really appreciate this series first off because of the world building and it is high fantasy if you didn't know that. There is so much different, there are so many different intricacies with the different places that are described in this book and the different people then have like different traits from coming from different places and I really enjoyed how all of that came together in this book without spoiling anything. This is the finale after all so everything kind of you know happened and came together. There was a big battle scene. And although it took me forever to get through the sections that were the battle sequences, I really appreciated how long and intense they were because in books where there's just like a short battle and it happens and then the villain or whatever they're fighting is defeated, it just feels so unbelievable because it's just so fast and it just doesn't seem like that's how it would actually be in real life. So I appreciated how realistic these books get. They're very truthful in the way that they don't try to like hide some gruesome realities or like the shittiness of life sometimes. So I really appreciate these books for that. I know this is apparently a very controversial book to enjoy, but I don't really care. So this was a favorite of 2019. Next we have The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang, which I actually just finished in June. This is about a prince that hires a dressmaker to make the prince's clothing, but Luke, does the dressmaker know that the prince actually wants the dressmaker to make dresses and different gowns for the prince to wear in different settings? And it is just the cutest book. The art style is absolutely gorgeous and I love it so much. And it is just one of the sweetest stories. The representation, I believe, is gender fluidity, not specifically trans. It was such and it is a, such a cute book. I loved it so much. I believe I read it within like two days, something like that. So definitely pick this one up. I recently just finished Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I read about 350 pages of this during my vacation on the first day. <laughs> And then it took me like two weeks to read like the last 50 pages because I did not want it to end. This is one of my favorite romance stories of all time. It is about the first son of the president of the United States of America, who is a woman voted in 2016, alternate reality. <laughs> But the first son has a rivalry with the royal prince of the United Kingdom and suddenly those enemies turn to lovers and it is the cutest romance ever. I really enjoyed the diplomatic aspects of this book as well as little hints of Casey McQuiston's knowledge of journalism which I did not know that Casey had a journalism degree, but that is one of the fields that I work in, so that was really exciting to see. It does have a lot of different um, representations for LGBTQ+, not just um, our two main characters, but also some side characters that appear throughout the book, which I think is really well done. I recently finished Radio Science by Alice Osman. So I did not know how much I was going to enjoy this book going into it. I thought it would... I thought this book would appeal to me, but I wasn't so sure. So it's basically about the student Frances who loves listening to like her favorite podcast ever. And then at some point she meets the creator of the podcast and then they become friends and work on it together. Then a bunch of other stuff happens and some relationships fall apart, new ones blossom. <sighs> I don't know if it exactly has anxiety representation, but I definitely felt like a lot of aspects were anxiety related which is something I really appreciated. I really got the same kind of like 
vibes from this book that I got when I was reading Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, which was one of my favorites of last year. So if you enjoyed Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell or you enjoyed Radio Silence, read the other one because I definitely felt similar feelings for both of those. I don't know if you know this yet, but I read Again But Better by Christine Riccio, and I first read it as an e-arc, which I so graciously got approved for by NetGalley, and I was so excited. I read it within like three days. I loved it so much. I immediately ordered, pre-ordered this when Christine announced that she had made a book deal and it was ready for pre-order. I went to Christine's signing in Portland, Oregon when she was on tour and she signed my book. I also had already pre-ordered the Barnes & Noble edition so I have two copies and it's fine because I love this book so much and I'm going to annotate one when I reread it. I still haven't actually read the final copy of it, I only read the arc which I'm pretty sure there aren't that many um, extreme changes between it as far as I've heard from talking to friends who have recently read it, but if you don't know what this book is about, it's about a college student named Shane who is studying pre-med and then decides to study a year abroad in England because she just did not feel very connected to her college experience and wanted to experience something abroad. And then she makes a lot of friends there, decides to make a couple changes in life, falls in love, and some other amazing fantastic things that I can't talk about without spoiling it. Oh, I love this book so much. Oh, yes, this is definitely one of my favorites of 2019. I can't wait to reread it. Yay! Next we have Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto and I was accepted in the first writer's street team which is Nikki Palpretto's street team for the release of the second book and I believe it might continue on to the third book I'm not sure yet but the second book is called Heart of Flames the cover reveal just happened I think like a couple weeks ago and oh, I'm so excited I was accepted to the street team because it is one of the coolest experiences I've been a part of and I loved this book so much this book is like a amazing mixture of like the concepts of Mulan and something else really cool that I can't think of. Anyways, so it's about Phoenix Riders. Do I have to say anything else? No, I do. I probably do. So it's about Phoenix Riders and ah, the world building is fantastic. So a lot of people I heard have um, thought they really the really beginning that the beginning was really slow which the first couple chapters is a lot about building up the world and making some background for the following chapters but honestly everything in the first couple chapters which yes it is a little slow is so essential for everything later it just builds and builds and builds upon it and it is just so exciting it is about two sisters veronica and val who have been searching for phoenix eggs for such a long time they finally stumble on two phoenix eggs and there's lies and betrayal between the two sisters so then our main character veronica decides to go out on her own and to join the phoenix riders that are on top of the mountain who are training to fight against the controlling government empire one of those there's also a hint at romance which is really exciting and look at this cover okay so this is the owl crate exclusive edition the original one um this is lighter this might be a slightly different color it might be more silvery gold looking either way it's fantastic okay so next i have eight books <laughs> We have Saga, and I have almost the entire Saga of Saga. So we have Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, Volume 5, <gasps> Volume 6, Volume 7, and Volume 8. So there are two other volumes that I do not currently own. I am still working on this one. I think I only have a couple pages left. So I guess, excluding this one since I haven't finished this and I haven't completely finished the series, but so far, I have given far five stars to every single one of these books. So this is about a young family that are currently on the run from their two respective homes that are fighting each other. 
and it is the horns and the wings that have been in a long waging war against each other. They were both on either sides of the battle and then they fell in love and had a wonderful miracle child. And just look at this art. I should warn, it is an adult comic book, so there is graphic scenes of violence, nudity, and sex. So if that's not for you, this comic might not be for you. But if you're all on board for that, this comic is a good freaking time. Oh my goodness. The world building in this is phenomenal. We have amazing representation throughout, across the board. And the storyline, the plot is just so dynamic and wonderful. Every single time I pick up the next volume, I feel like it's not going to be able to top the last one. And somehow it always does. I'm always afraid the storyline somehow is going to get repetitive or stale, or they're gonna run out of things to talk about. And, but of course they don't because it's phenomenal. <sighs> I love this. Next up, we got the big one. We have Avatar The Last Airbender, The Promise. So maybe, Maybe you don't know, but Avatar The Last Airbender is one of my favorite shows of all time. I now own the full series off of iTunes, which is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, which is great. So this takes place after the show ends and is just wonderful. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't finished the show or hasn't watched the show, which is just ridiculous, but oh my goodness. Look at the team, look at the squad. I love them so much. Oh my goodness. So of course, um, these comics are completely approved by and like checked with the creators of the show. So this isn't like off brand or anything. So it is all, it's all with the approval of our gods and saviors who created the show. So everything's fine. But this is just absolutely fantastic. So this is, um, after Zuko becomes Fire Lord, he's trying to kind of figure out his life after going against his family and all this stuff. And of course, he wants to revise the Fire Nation into like a more peaceful way of it cooperating with the other nations and everything. But then with that, he keeps second guessing himself. And this is basically about a promise that Zuko and Aang make between themselves that if Zuko ever goes along the same lines of what his father the fire lord was doing with the fire nation that Aang would end him <sighs> oh my goodness such high stakes and the art in this is absolutely gorgeous oh my goodness look at the squad look at them go oh my gosh this is fantastic and then last but certainly not least is check please by ngozi okazio and i read this off of my tablet as an ebook, and oh my goodness, I cannot wait to own it in physical copy. It is a webcomic that Ngozi has been working on since 2013, and it's about a former figure skater who goes off to college and joins the hockey team. I know nothing about hockey, and now I absolutely love hockey. Oh my goodness, it is the cutest story in the world, and it's about love and finding yourself and acceptance, and oh my goodness, it is so freaking cute. I love it. It has LGBTQ plus representation and it is the cutest fucking story in the world. <sighs> and it's really good. <laughs> it's about Biddy. Biddy bakes pies. Biddy loves baking pies. He's the cutest thing in the entire world and he deserves all of the love and success that there is. <sighs> and with that, those are all of my favorites of this year. I do have honorable mentions. I always listen to about 30 minutes of the Harry Potter audiobooks every night before I go to bed. So of course I got through the last one, Deathly Hallows. Now I'm back to the first one. But I listened to the last one, Deathly Hallows. Five stars, of course. It's always going to be a favorite. It doesn't really need much of a mention here, but I thought I would toss it in. I also reread The Lightning Thief and Sea of Monsters, both of those five stars by Rick Riordan. Excellent, very good, a good time. If you want to join us for reading The Sea of Monsters for the Reading Riordan live show that is happening at the end of this month, please feel free to. 
they're very short books, they're middle grade, so they're not very dense, and they're excellent. So yes, Greek gods and demigods, that's all you need to know. Yeah, and with that, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like or maybe the subscribe button if you want to see more of my face. Yeah, you can also hit the little bell icon if you ever want to get a notification that I posted something. That might be exciting. Who knows? Maybe that sounds like a good time to you. And with that, you have a lovely day. Bye! Royal Blue by Casey Red. The college student named something are up in the mountains.